Now that we're fully into 2023, it's time to go over my top add-ons for Home Assistant. These are things that I use on a daily basis and are invaluable to me for my home automation platform. There are a couple of add-ons though that aren't necessarily uh, home automation based, but I use them as add-ons in Home Assistant for their ease of installation and maintenance. So we'll go over those as well. So let's jump right in. So here's all the add-ons that I'm currently running in Home Assistant. Let's start with my first uh, top add-on and that's AdGuard Home. AdGuard Home is a network-wide DNS server. You can use it to block ads, you can use it uh, to block tracking. And if you set it up to be your DNS server, which I do, and I'm actually running two of these, one on my Home Assistant Blue, one on my Home Assistant Yellow, I use it as a primary and a secondary DNS server for all of the devices in my home network. And that does all of the blocking and all of the, the uh, tracking or blocking ads and tracking uh, of things in my network. So let's just go into the quick interface. Uh, you can get to it from the web UI here or the side panel. And you can see all of the things that I'm tracking. So currently I've got, I've had 568,564 uh, queries, 24,000 of, uh, of those were blocked by filters. That means the 4% of the the traffic in my network never made it out to the internet. That saves me some bandwidth and also prevents me from seeing all the ads and stuff that come up on my devices. Now, some of you have asked, does this block ads in streaming services such as YouTube? It doesn't block embedded ads, but it does block things on websites that throw the ads up. It also blocks things um, that are tracking you in a lot of these. And a lot of this will depend on your settings and your filters within Home or within AdGuard. Now, this video is not designed to go into detail on how to use any of these things. I do have uh, videos individually on some of these add-ons that I've made in the past. So search that up and take a look. But this one is one of my favorites because it does do a lot of blocking of DNS or blocking of ads and phishing and everything else. And you can get a quick query log to see what has been blocked. Um, so you, you never really realize how many things are being tracked until you pull up something like AdGuard. And I like AdGuard um, over PyHole. I haven't used PyHole in a lot of years. I've used AdGuard because I can automate things through Home Assistant. I also like it for its interface and ease of use. I used PyHole. I don't have anything against PyHole. If you are a PyHole user, that's fantastic. They, they do similar things. All right, so that's the first one on my uh, top add-ons. So let's go back over to the add-ons dashboard and you can do that anywhere by typing the C key and clicking on add-on dashboard. My next add-on is the Nginx proxy manager. The Nginx proxy manager allows me to proxy websites through my home assistant instance into other devices on my network. And I have a lot of different devices running on my network. After you sign in, you'll get something like this, where you can see what your hosts are that you're set up to actually uh, proxy and where they go to. And you can see here on the destination that I have a number of different things that are both HTTP and HTTPS. And I use Nginx Proxy Manager along with SSL certificates, which you can provision directly from this interface to send my traffic encrypted over my local network as well as from external sources as well. And you set up DNS both internally and externally. And what I didn't mention about AdGuard just a minute ago is that I also use it for DNS rewrites. If I have a domain, um, a fully qualified domain that I want to reach from inside my network, I just redirect it using AdGuard, using a DNS rewrite. And then when I'm external to my network, I use public DNS to point back to my uh, Nginx proxy manager. And then that allows it to go to the right host that you can see here. So a lot of different services that I run within my network. That is a really neat, uh, tool and you can extend it to do a lot of different things. I have some of them that have access lists that prevent um, access without coming from a specific IP range or password protected, those kinds of things. So you can add security to the front end of your, your sites inside your network if you want to do that through Nginx Proxy Manager. So that is another one of my uh, favorite add-ons and one I've talked about in the past, of course. One of my third favorite add-ons here is Node Red. Node-RED is really neat because you can visualize all of your automations. 
my automations um, run both in the native automation tool in Home Assistant and also in my uh, Node-RED setup here. And you can see some of the stuff I've done with lights. You can see things I do with alarms. For example, if the alarm gets triggered, all of my lights in the entire place come on uh, and it does some other things as well. Uh, door actions, if doors are left open or doors are unlocked, certain things happen. Um, so you can do a lot of things and you can visualize these things as well because you can see the flows and how things go on. I like that from a visual perspective. Node-RED is not for everybody, but when you're talking about visualizing and troubleshooting some of your automations, you can do it this way. And then of course, you can always use the Home Assistant native automations as well. And I've got a mixture of both. When I first started with Home Assistant a long time ago, I had a lot of automations that were very complicated and I couldn't really do them very well in Home Assistant because you had to do it all in YAML and you had to really understand a lot of that. And I was learning a Home Assistant at the time. And so I just fired them up in Node-RED and was able to do some complicated things with them. One of the things here is the fridge example where the fridge door is uh, above a certain degree in temperature. It starts a timer uh, and then it will tell me every two hours that my temperature is too high and it does all these flows through uh, automation. Now you could probably do this in Home Assistant directly now with the new automations, but I just leave it here because it's always already up and running in Node-RED. And again, I have a lot of stuff going here. So that's number three of my top add-ons for Home Assistant that I use on a regular basis every day and automation runs every day through Node-RED. So let's go back over to my add-ons page. Number four is one of the ones I've recently started using, which I think is really neat. And it's called uh, Uptime Kuma. And this is a monitoring tool uh, for stuff within your network or wherever you want to monitor. You can monitor re uh, remote stuff as well. But I have a monitor here on my Home Assistant Blue that actually monitors my Home Assistant Yellow monitoring. So I have cross monitoring. So I have uh, Uptime Kuma on my Home Assistant Yellow that monitors most of my services. And then I have it over here that monitors things on the Home Assistant Yellow. Because if the Home Assistant Yellow goes down, it won't be able to alert me that there's a problem. So I monitor it with the blue and then everything else I monitor with my Home Assistant Yellow. So this is a really neat uh, tool. I use it to... Um, also go in here and alert me so you can set up uh, some alerting. And I've got one set to my pushover and I've got one set to, I could set it to my Discord client as well. And it would alert me in Discord if I wanted that to happen. And you can set a number of features here, monitor types, um, names, the URL it's monitoring, how often to check, how many times it retries, and then how often to check once it's down and how many times to uh, resend the notification if it's down. So um, a lot of different options here, uh, accepted status codes, uh, some advanced settings. If you want to ignore TSL, SSL certificates for websites, you can do that. You can also, uh, if you're monitoring websites and you want to make sure that the SSL certificate is about is not going to expire, you can actually get that here as well. So a lot of neat things, uh, a lot of different uh, options you can specify if you want to customize the queries uh, and figure out if something is up and running. So really neat for that kind of thing. That's one of my favorites right now. Uh, it saved me a few times when stuff went down. I didn't realize it. So that is a really fun uh, tool to have here. Uh, all right, so let's go back over to the add-on dashboard. My next favorite is Vault Warden. Vault Warden is a Bitwarden compatible uh, password manager. And I use this all the time, every day, all day long. If I didn't have this running, I wouldn't be able to get into half the websites or probably any of them. I don't know any of my passwords for any of my sites. It's all stored in my password manager. If you're not using a password manager, I highly recommend it. Vault Warden as an add-on to Home Assistant gets you up and running very quickly. You can install Vault Warden uh, separately and run it in a Docker container or something else, but it's just super easy to get up and running with Home Assistant as an add-on. And I made a video recently on Vault Warden, uh, especially when the whole LastPass or uh, yeah, LastPass thing was happening. So Check that out if you want to learn more about that. Bit, uh, Bitwarden is open source password manager and Vault Warden uh, is the version that they run in Home Assistant. And it has a lot of interesting features that you can use with this as well, but it's just an add-on in Home Assistant. 
Uh, and it works just like the Bitwarden. The clients for Bitwarden uh, in your browser, on your phone, the ad uh, apps and stuff like that can also work with this. So it works uh, really well with Home Assistant. Um, and it talks about all of it right through here and what you can do to set it up and everything else. Again, I think that if you're not running a password manager, you're potentially opening yourself up to a lot of problems. So run a password manager, whether you use Vault Warden or something else, um, vet it for security, make sure it's valid. The, the benefits of running it local is that it's yours. You can control it. The negatives are that you have to make sure it's backed up and it, you are running something that you have to maintain. So make sure you're keeping up to date with security patches and all of that. And in Home Assistant, it will notify you when something is uh, requires an update. So super easy again to maintain if you want to do it that way. So that is one of my favorite add-ons and one that I probably use the most out of all of them, uh, just because I'm into different sites all day long, every day, and I need the passwords for those. I also store secure notes, by the way, and other things that you can do. So if you have a, a combination or um, some TOTP uh, backup passwords or anything else you need, you can put that in there as a secure note. So it's not just for passwords, it's for securing other things as well. All right, so I've got two more for you. Run through this real quick. Z-Wave JS uh, UI is another one of my favorite logins or logins, one of my add-ons. And this one is all of my uh, Z-Wave stuff that if you heard that in the background, that was um, Bitwork or Uptime Kuma alerting me that I had something down, which I'm, I'm aware of. If you look through here, um, these are all of my devices that are running on Z-Wave. Without this add-on, uh, I wouldn't be able to have a quick view of this. You can run uh, different versions of the Z-Wave JS um, add-ons in Home Assistant. I like Z-Wave JS MQTT because I can pull stuff into MQTT with it. I can view things that way. I can do actions on them. And it has a nice interface that allows me to interact with this. Now you might notice a bunch of smiley or sad faces over here. It's because um, we're actually packing the house up to move. And my house is becoming dumber as we go here. And I'm taking all of the smart switches with me to the new house. So I have to pull them out a little bit at a time. Uh, but there are still some things that are up and running on my network. Uh, and you can go in here and you can take a look at all of these settings. You can do configuration changes directly from the UI. It makes it a super simple way to manage your Z-Wave JS network. So if you're into that, if you're running Z-Wave, this is one way to do that. Now, be, don't just come over here and install Z-Wave JS MQTT and start using it. You need to do some things, or you need to consider th some things about migration from what you're on now to this, because there are some, some caveats. Not gonna go into that in the video today. I have a lot of Z-Wave videos that you can read uh, a watch and learn about how I did uh, setups of all this stuff right here. But it is a necessary add-on to make my Z-Wave network function and interact with Home Assistant. So one of the big ones. And my final one uh, is an honorable mention. And this one is going to be the uh, this one right here, EMQX. This is my current MQTT broker. Now for some, it might be a little bit of an overkill um, for this but I use it to be able to get some good insights into what my network is doing. And this is the interface for EMQX. It allows you to do a lot of different things. I made a video on this as well, but you can see incoming messages, outgoing messages. The point I'm making here is for a lot of stuff that I do, I need an MQTT broker. And this is just one option. There is a built-in MQTT broker in Home Assistant that you can use as well. And that comes native to Home Assistant. Um, it's just an add-on that you can add and I'm looking for it here. Uh, here it is, Mosquito Broker. This is one that I have installed. I'm not running it right now, but it is also an option, a lightweight version of the MQTT Broker. It's really all you need. If you're getting into heavy duty MQTT stuff and you're trying to troubleshoot or scale things or, or trouble or do whatever with it, something like this would be beneficial. Uh, if you're just doing straight MQTT without a lot of fluff, this Mosquito Broker and Home Assistant works just fine. I've used it for a lot of years before I started playing with EMQX. So those are my top, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, seven add-ons for Home Assistant. I have a lot more here that I run. Uh, Zigbee to MQTT is a new one for me. I'm playing with new Zigbee stuff. Uh, Zigbee's 
a little weird to me because it's not as stable. Things tend to disappear and whatnot. Um, but there are just hundreds and hundreds of add-ons. If you went to the add-on store and you started searching for something, there's probably something out here for you. Um, one thing I do want to mention, if you're not doing backups, you probably want something like a Samba backup or whatnot to be able to backup to your Google Drive or something else. So make sure that one. I didn't mention that in today's uh, tops, but it is one that is also running automatically in the background every day. You should create a backup of your system. All right, that's all I have for this video. I hope it was interesting to you. Um, if you want more on what my, my networks are, what my home assistant setups are, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, as I mentioned just a minute ago, as of this video filming, we will probably be moving. And that means that I will be putting all of my smart home stuff into a new house and setting it all back up again. Um, so that'll be a fun exercise. Uh, maybe I'll do some lessons learned based on how I did things here. Maybe we'll just start fresh, which would be interesting. Uh, I've had a lot of technical debt over the years filming videos and adding add-ons and things. Maybe we'll start fresh and just have a brand new setup. So that'll be fun too. All right. Let me know again if you have any comments or suggestions down in the comments below. And I really appreciate you watching and supporting what I do here. And we'll see you in the next video.